happy Saturday, boys and girls. We're back out here with the C T again. This should be the last video I do, won't it? Uh, we'll do one last thing to it, and then we're going to have to just turn it back over to him and say uh, good luck and Godspeed, buddy. Uh, the fuel pump is clearly in the wrong location. It's right here up on the fender well. These are pusher pumps. They're not sucker pumps. That's not what they're designed to do. And you have the myriad of issues with it, okay? But right now, basically, uh, this FPR, which is factory, should have a fuel pressure at around 58 ish psi somewhere in that neighborhood you know 56 to 60 we would take of that regulator right there okay the problem is right now he cranks the truck up he has 43 base maybe 45 on a good day uh as we start accelerating it starts dropping and we're clearly the pressure the only problem is we're just not getting enough fuel in this thing here we're going to try to answer two things one is stock pump still in here without dropping the tank so we're going to see if the pump's still in here if we're trying to draw through that pump that's definitely be a big problem Maybe we get that pump to come to life. If it's still there, hopefully, uh, it can help this. And we're gonna move that down closer to the tank. So first thing we're gonna do is just get it out of here. So let's see what we're doing. We got a myriad of messes in here. Uh, this is left leftovers from the uh, carbureted days. Here's the pump here. It's very, very well mounted, you can see here. So we're gonna unscrew it there. We're gonna take it loose. Uh, obviously, we're gonna pull the lines back. Uh, what happened here is we'll take this line and we're just gonna get a quick bar connector and put it back together, pull the slack down that way and uh, go from there. You see it works its way in and around. It goes back over right there. And we did take all that crap off there they had up there where they had it pushed on with hose clamps on there. And we got the ICT billet adapters in there. We got his fuel pressure extending unit in there. So now he has data there. We fixed his transmission by just merely moving this blue line from here to there. This is not vacuum. That is vacuum. Transmission works great now. The motor's making a weird whining noise. We're gonna take the belt off today because to my untrained ear, the whining noise seems to be up in this area. We're just going to double check to make sure there's none of the accessories. I did check the power steering pump. It had fluid in it. We added some extra fluid to it. And it's still whining. We're just going to make sure it's not the transmission whining. If it is, then it has to get fixed. So, But anywho, the motor seems relatively healthy. It's uh, The heads have clearly been rebuilt at one point right there. You can see by that. And it seems to be running really well. Uh, it's got some sort of aftermarket camshaft and I really don't know what it is. He was told it was stock. It's clearly not stock, but it's not wild. And we're going to move the pump down to here in this area here. Now we're going to be reusing this wire. We're actually going to put a relay on it because one of the other problems they have and one of the things you should never do with a Holly PCM or any stock PCM, this is the fuel pump turn on wire. There's power to pump completely off of. We're going to use this to turn a relay on and we're going to draw power off the battery with the other 1700 connections here. <laughs> so we're gonna do that and we're gonna try to sort all that out there but anyways first thing we get started we're gonna get this pump out of here we're gonna try to get this out of here just to clean it just a little bit up and maybe zip tie some of the wires together maybe perhaps and just maybe if we're feeling spry we might help them out and we'll get that wire pulled off that bushing right there with the zip tie on it because i don't know who thought that was a good idea but that's clearly not the best location for that wire to be I mean, that is a pivot point. Well, that's a shock mount, so it doesn't pivot so much, but still, not the best place for it to be. Anywho, so let's uh, do this. through that run we just did it ain't going to be pretty i can tell you that all right here we are we're going to start a run we're going to start at idle here fuel pressure is 50 psi let's go about old 3750 fuel pressure 53 get not bad go on all up here we're going to run it up 4400 rpm fuel pressure 33 and you can see here, we're gonna start diving off. We're at 14 PSI, and we finally got to 4,600, and then we just 
Went full on re re here. You can see from the tracks here, there's the fuel pressure just doing whatever it wants to do. Like right here, let's see here, 16, 13, let's see there, 7. Oh, yeah, that, that's, that's the good stuff. I don't like hose clamps, but they are on there, and that is fuel injection line. Now, that is the original line. He didn't pay me change. So we left his filter in place. The biggest problem he has right now is off the top. This pump is not designed to suck. It's designed to push. It's still having to pull fuel out of there. Now, there's a little bit that comes out naturally, but it's not enough to get through to build the pressure we need. And you can take this thing, you can bump it on tip end. Fuel pressure drops, it'll recover, and then it'll go back up. And then it just goes away because it just can't keep up. I told him you need to sump the tank or put the proper fuel pump in the hat. They sell them, but the problem is they're about 500-ish dollars for that pump. You got to drop the tank, put it in there, and rewire everything, which isn't that big a deal because now we have the wires here. I did the connections there, so we have all that there. And uh, But that's the problem we have. And I didn't put this truck together. I didn't commit this sin. I can't make this sin go away unless I get paid. So that's where we're at. And as you can see the bottom line, there's fuel pressure all over the effing place. And I can move this down the line here, and it just same thing constantly. If you're driving normally, it'll do fine. As soon as you walk the throttle open, it'll dive and it'll pick up, and sometimes it'll recover. Then it'll just fall back off again. Right there, look at there. It's low fuel pressure right there. Oh, we got 30 psi. That ain't no. That ain't good. I can't tune it that way because the injectors are not going to flow the same. I need the, the injectors to flow consistently the same across the board no matter what. And you would have to maintain the 58 PSI that the regular is supposed to show. The injectors are generally rated at a given PSI at 43. But when you go into Holly, it'll set it up and we'll adjust it for the pressure. You need consistent pressure. Consistent pressure. Consistent pressure. Trying to get him to understand see how my pumps come down and feed into it. That's what it is. So, until he decides he wants to pay more money, I'm done. Peace. I feel bad for him. Let's see here. I didn't put it together. I didn't wire it. I didn't plumb it. I didn't build it. I did what he asked. He said, move the pump down to the rail. I told him it probably won't work, but we did it anyway. All right, moving on. I'm going to my Tahoe. I gotta put a water pump on it, then we'll pick up from there what I'm gonna do next on the water pump the shit's easy. Old stuff. Put a huge one on it too, because that's the way I roll around here. No. Okay, sure. And it, and it. We check all this towel cam. Uh, <laughs> towel cam. Yeah, put it down. Put it down. <laughs> Rebuilding our trailer. For the, you're not packing the berries good enough, man. We gave up on that a long time ago. The third time the tire fell off, we quit worrying I about did, it. I did not <laughs> I tried I packing the right way the first three times. It didn't work. No, no, no. That's make a difference now. We have suddenly discovered the commonality of why they, they use Ford parts in these trailers, and that's why we figure out why it keeps breaking all the time. So now we know. Exactly why. <sighs> we should build an SBF. Definitely don't want to do that. Then I tell you, wouldn't do it again. There we go. Well, slide that jammy on there. We already did the other side. It stayed on. This one we went to hook off down the road, and it decided it wanted to go somewhere else. We thought this tire was going to leave the chat. I could jump in and put the camera down, but why would I do that? That'd be stupid. Why, why, why start now? Yeah. You're doing, you're doing good work, man. God. Dog it. Golly gosh darn it. <laughs> Fucking God damn it. Oh, there went the monetization on that video. You didn't need that money anyway. I finally got approved for it. That's good. I didn't do it, though. <laughs> you did a lot of money. I hadn't done it yet. F YouTube. Fuck them crackers. What you looking for, sir? 
the bars. And while we left him as odd. You know, if I'd known that's what you needed and for a Ford, I have like three or four of those in a pack in there in the Wheelwood box. Yeah, well, you didn't, so. I didn't. Are. I don't have the nut, though. I love how it goes on so smooth. Isn't it? Isn't it great? It's great. The smoothness. All that smoothness. I welded it, motherfucker. Oh, it'll be fine. I should have turned the camera off when we did this part. You're not setting your drag right. <laughs> All the uggas. I don't know. Sounds good to me. Sounds <laughs> I'm sure people in the comment section tell us everything we did wrong. It'll probably be too late. If I could just do it now, instantaneously, it'd be better. Yeah, shit. Totally unrelated, I did polish the headlights with a 3M kit in the Tahoe. Looking spiffy as hell as usual. Put a billet grill in it also. Looking spiffy, looking spiffy, looking spiffy. Let's go take this trailer and see if the wheels fall off. I mean, what else we want to do? We're trying to test if we go four wheel ride without taking a big, big drive. We're rolling down the road here. Let's see if the tire can fall off or not. Find out. I don't know. Yeah, 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 yeah. I checked all the bearings there, make sure everything's Gucci. Hope that's acceptable amount of play. Not sure. Hey, hey, y'all, look at me. Hey, how are y'all doing? What's up? Long time no see. Wait a minute. You get that like button down below if you could. That'd be cool. Hi. Right. right to the action. Wait, there is no action. All right, yesterday you saw I drove it and it slung a belt off. It got rather toasty and it didn't hurt anything. It doesn't appear, so I got lucky. I had to coast in at 240 degrees, shut the car off up on the road up there and coast it in. Threw the belt off when I was doing a burnout at O'Reilly's and I was too stupid to get out to look to see I did it. So anyway, I added that pulley back and went and got me a 3.5 inch longer belt. It seems pretty tight now, there's no slack there. So I think we're on to a path to success. Got a new tensioner on it too, just in case to make sure everything's hunky-dory. But yeah, so yeah, that, that was good fun. I mean, I drove there, made it no problem. Just, that part there sucked, but. On the Tahoe, it had one broken fog light, so I got these off uh, Amazon. They're $27 LEDs. They fit nicely in there, and they are wired to the factory connector, so they come on with the stock fog lights. I thought it was a nice little touch. I mean, I could just put the stock stuff back in, but I wanted to look extra rednecky with it. Come on. We're going to get a windshield put in soon, hopefully. Perhaps, maybe. I put an aftermarket radio in the Holzenville and fixed the air by charging it. Good little car. Probably need some gas in it soon, but oh well. But like I said, I do like this whole thing. It's a good little running car. I am planning on tinting the windows in it and putting wheels on it. Just having to wait a little bit before I do that. Modest enough, so I like it. Yeah, screw that back on with a screw, and uh, yeah, I'm not gonna turn it around as long as I do know with the phone out, put a screw in it. And that's where we're at with this thing. That's about all we've done to it. Cleaned it. It's a really nice car for what it is. It's 90 G of junk, so it ain't that good. But still, runs really well. Quiet and big. AC blows nice and nice cold. Heat works in it. It's a good running car. It's going to hang around for a little while. I feel For sale add up tomorrow, probably. You know I may. But I do intend to keep it. I kind of like it. I've been driving it back and forth to town. And I like it a lot. I like it a lot. I did clean this big beast up today. I didn't do a stupendous job. I did clean it up. And I got the fog lights rewired back on it where they were not working. So I got them back together. They're not on a factory switch, unfortunately. They're on a second stupid little toggle thing. But it works. It's good enough. AC blow. I did polish the lights on these. But these being the... Chinese eBay variety. They didn't shine up as well because the way they tan them, apparently. But it didn't turn out as good as I thought it was going to do. But it's better it was. It had some speckles on them. But it's good enough for what it is. And it'll have to do. But it definitely could. It's going to get new headlights in it. New headlights. And I got to get new cab lights for it, too. Because I lost one. Just can't keep them eBay head like cab lights on it. But we'll figure it out. Alrighty. Uh, update on what happened uh, on 
Tuesday, I went and had a, what do they call it, endoscopy. Uh, they put these little tubes down your throat, they knock you out, lay you on your side. And uh, basically they're gonna go in. They were gonna stretch my throat, but I still had food residue in there. They couldn't do it. Uh, but they did believe I have one. I'm going to pronounce it out because I'm not a very smart man. It sounds like I think achalasia or something like that. Anyway, it's a muscle down here that won't relax at the top of my stomach somewhere in this area here. So uh, that's the issue there. New boot goofing here. God, that's on 80. Why is it on 80? I don't know. It's going to kill you. Huh? Trying to kill you. Yes, sir. Some new boots did it. So anyway, like I'm saying, I got that weird ass disease there. So they sent me a uh, 54 hour fast. Uh, liquid died only for 54 hours and I went and had a uh, another thing done they put another tube down my throat that had lights on it, measuring devices and I was awake for this whole time with this and then they go through your nose with it and they make you swallow five millimeters of saline at a time that was fun big big fun ten times ten out of ten don't ever want to ride that ride again but uh, hopefully Monday they'll call me and let me know when my surgery is scheduled so I can get that done that'd be cool but there's the piece of shit race car behind me so uh, that's where that stands and that's all I can tell you about that. That's all I know about that. Right? We'll change the old top low here. We're going to do some plugs and wires. They all the original jammies in there. All 270,000 miles or whatever it is on it. Way too fucking many miles. But that's all stock stuff there, so it's way past. They're capped at a solid 80 thousandths when we took them out. <laughs> Probably. Not sure why we had to misfire, but we'll figure it out. We hope. Oh, we got some spacers on there, yo. Them spacers, yo. Look at that. Jammies on there. Got them Ching Chong wires and them AC Delta plugs. This thing is gonna be rocking out. They're gonna be doing burnouts and park, people. Burnouts and park. Alright. We have a nickname Chase Country Badger now. Probably a fucking damn redneck. Country Badger. <laughs> no longer, uh, what was that dumb crap I did with uh, Knowles and you? Oh, a Huggy Bear and Stick Boy. <laughs> yeah, Huggy Bear and Stick Boy. No more. Stick Boy went MIA, so. F him. I'm just a dumb redneck now. It's okay, bro. Well, I don't have any race cars. The four wheel drive fucking SUV and a goddamn bunch of four wheelers. Yeah. And there's a bunch of four wheelers down there. Huh? Five wheels down there more. Yeah. I'd leave it down there. Back up also to come out. There's your gap right there, boys and girls. Get that. There uh -huh, we go. Oh, there you go. Oh, nope. This is the camera. Oh, man. Never buy an iPhone. I don't care what nobody tells you. Don't buy an iPhone. You're fine if you're not a fucking boomer. Uh, iPhones suck. F Steve Jobs and his damn phone. But anyway, almost done. That's all I got for today. We'll catch you later. Peace, chicken grease, and if any updates come, I'll let y'all know, but that's where we're at, and good times, good times, but we'll catch you next one.